الحمد لله بارئ النسم وخالق الخلق من عدم أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وصحبه ومن تبعهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين أما بعد أيها الأحبة في الله كان سلفنا الصالح وما زال الصالحون اليوم يهتمون بأمر اهتماما عظيما بل كانوا يدعون الله سبحانه وتعالى من أجل هذا الأمر وهذا الأمر هو حسن الختام وسوء الخاتمة كانوا يخافون من سوء الخاتمة وكانوا يتمنون ويدعون الله سبحانه وتعالى بحسن الخاتمة لأن هذه الدنيا أيها الأحبة هي مؤقتة ولماذا كانوا يسألون الله جل وعلا حسن الخاتمة لأن النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم قال إنما الأعمال بالخواتيم إنما الأعمال بالخواتيم والخاتمة هي العمل الذي يقبل الله الله سبحانه وتعالى العبد عليه في هذه الدنيا يعني آخر عمل يعمله الإنسان في هذه الدنيا قبل قبل أن يتركها فهذه الدنيا كلنا سنتركها العمر هنا محدد كل إنسان له عمر قد قدره الله سبحانه وتعالى له وسيقف هذا العمر في يوم من الأيام وسينتقل الإنسان إلى الآخرة يقول الله سبحانه وتعالى كل نفس ذائقة الموت وإنما توفون أجوركم يوم القيامة فمن زحزح عن النار وأدخل الجنة فقد فاز Brothers and sisters our pious predecessors and the righteous today as well pay great attention to a particular matter they pay so much attention to it that they turn to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and beg him concerning that matter. And that matter is the issue of how we will leave this world. In other words, whether a person will have a good end or an evil end. They used to fear an evil end and they used to ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for a good end. And of course they would they would do so. Because the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam told us that actions are according to the last of them. In other words, what really counts is how you leave this world. What is the last thing you do before before you leave this world? And if we look to the Quran and the Sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and of course, if we look around us, we come to that realization that life is short. Everybody's lifespan is predetermined. We live on this earth, but then a time will come when we have to move from this earth and move on towards the hereafter. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us what means that every soul will taste death. And we will be given our full compensation. In other words, either we will be rewarded or we will be punished on the day of resurrection. So whoever is drawn away from, whoever is averted from the hellfire, from an zuhziha anna wa udkhil al jannah, and is entered into al jannah or paradise, then those are the people who have been who have been successful. Even. كما قال الله سبحانه وتعالى كل نفس ذائقة الموت وقال تعالى لكل أجل كتاب لا بد من النقلة أيها الأخيار 
من هذه الدنيا إلى الآخرة فكم نسمع يوما بعد يوم عن قريب لنا قد مات عن جار لنا قد مات عن صاحب لنا قد مات عن أخت لنا قد ماتت وهكذا كل يوم نسمع هذه الأخبار يقول الله سبحانه وتعالى كل من عليها فان ويبقى وجه ربك ذو الجلال والإكرام Allah Jalla wa ala tells us that every soul will die. And he tells us subhanahu wa ta'ala li kulli ajalin kitab. In other words, every destined matter has a set time. Nothing will carry on forever. So moving on from this world until the hereafter is inevitable. Look at how much we hear every day about a neighbor who died, about a relative who died, about a sister who died, about a colleague who died and so on and so forth. And this is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us that everything on this earth will perish. Everything will come to an end. And what will remain? It is only the face of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the owner of majesty and honor. It is only He subhanahu wa ta'ala that will live on. بعد القصص لأن القصص في الحقيقة لها تأثير كبير في قلوب الناس ولن أذكر لكم قصصا من الماضي البعيد لأن الجميع سوف يقول كان زمان هؤلاء كانوا يعيشون في زمن غير زمننا وفي دنيا غير دنيانا وإنما أذكر لكم قصصا حصلت في السنوات الماضية القريبة القصة الأولى يذكرها الشيخ قاسم فضائل يقول ذهبت إلى مسجد وهو مسجد كبير أخطب فيه فبعد أن خطبت نزلت من على المنبر وشرعت في الركعة الأولى من صلاة الجمعة ثم قمت إلى الركعة الثانية وحينما وصلت إلى قول الله سبحانه وتعالى إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين هنا سقط رجل في وسط المسجد أكمل الشيخ الصلاة وبعدها مباشرة لا نادى للناس أن يبتعدوا عن هذا الرجل لأنه كالعادة الناس يجتمعون حوله فقال لهم ابتعدوا عنه أعطوه هوى لعله مبتوم الحاصل أخذ بعض الإخوة في المسجد هذا الرجل الذي سقط في وسط المسجد إلى أقرب قسم طوارئ وهنا فحصه الطبيب وقال يا إخواني هذا الرجل قد فاضت روحه من حين سقر في المسجد الشيخ بعد ذلك بحث عن رقم هاتف أخي هذا الميت والميت اسمه محمد اتصل بالأخ فقال له يا خالد أخوك جاء من بعيد ليصلي معي فأرجوك لا يغسله أحد غيري لا يغسله أحد غيري وبالفعل قام الشيخ قاسم مع مجموعة من الإخوة بتغسيل هذا الأخ ثم بعد ذلك اتجه إلى البيت للعزاء وهناك قابل أخاه فقال له يا خالد أسألك بالله ما هو أرجى عمل ترجوه لأخيك؟ أن يموت هذه الميتة وهنا أرجو من الشباب خصوصا والشابات أن يستمعوا جيدا بل أرجو من جميع من له والد أو والدة على قيد الحياة أن يستمعوا وأن يستمعوا جيدا We said that death is inevitable and what is important for us is how we leave this world And at this 
time I want to mention two or three stories. Not stories from long ago, because if I say to you that this happened hundreds of years ago, the response will be, but that was another time. People were different then. They lived in a different world. But, you know, times are different now. So I'm going to relate to you some stories that happened fairly recently. Because stories have a huge impact on us. The first story is related to us by a sheikh by the name of Qasim Fadail. He says that he had gone one day to lead the people in Salat al-Jumu'ah. He delivered the khutbah as I am doing now. And then he descended and he led the people in the salah. He completed the first rak'ah. And then when he stood for the second rak'ah, and he was reciting Surah Al-Fatiha, he reached, إِيَّاكَ نَعْبُدُ وَإِيَّاكَ نَسْتَعِينَ The words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in which we are basically saying, it is you alone whom we worship. And it is from you alone that we seek help and assistance. He says at that point, and it was a huge masjid, somewhere in the middle of the masjid, somebody fell to the ground. The sheikh completed the salah, and immediately he called to the people to give him space. Because you know the habit of people when somebody falls or something happens to them is they crowd around them and they rush them. He said, you know, give him space so that he can breathe. And a group of brothers rushed this man to emergency. And there after the doctor, after the doctor took a look at him, he said, this man died from the moment that he fell, that he fell in the masjid. Meanwhile, the sheikh looked for the number of the deceased's brother. He called him, now the deceased, his name was Muhammad, and the brother's name was Khalid. He called him and said, Khalid, you know, your brother came a long way and he tired himself to come and pray with me, to pray Salat al-Jumu'ah with me. So I have a request. Please don't allow anyone to wash his body but me. And alhamdulillah, that was the case. The shaykh, along with others, washed that young man's body. After that, the shaykh headed to the home to offer condolences to the family. And there he met the brother Khalid. And he said to him, Khalid, I ask you by Allah, tell me, tell me what you think was a deed that your brother did that was more than likely the reason for him meeting this beautiful end. A beautiful end, of course. Husn al Khatima. Yawm al Jumu'ah wa huwa mutawaddi. Yawm al Jumu'ah wa huwa mukhtasil. Yawm al Jumu'ah wa huwa fi baytin min buyutillahi subhanahu wa ta'ala. Yawm al Jumu'ah wa huwa yuaddi. Wa huwa yuaddi. Akad al Salawat fi al Usbur. Ya subhanallah. The day of Jumu'ah the best day of the week when he had cleansed and purified himself he had taken a bath he was in the state of wudu the day of Jumu'ah Friday when he was in the masjid one of the houses of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and he was carrying out the most important salah or prayer of the week so of course this was a good end he asked him what do you think he did that was more than likely the reason for him meeting this end and before I give the answer, I want all of our youth to pay close attention. And partic not even only the youth, anyone who has either one or both of their parents still alive, then make sure that you listen to the answer very carefully. Isma'u li jawab Khalid. Yaqulu akhul mayyit, ya sheikh, والله نحن مجموعة من الإخوة وعندنا أخوات ولنا والدة ولكن يا شيخ والله كان محمد هو أبر واحد منا لوالدتنا كان محمد هذا يتفقد كل شيء لوالدته أول حاجة لا يتركها يأتيها دائما يأتيها في كل يوم وأثناء الكلام يقول الأخ خالد هذا يقول أخي محمد ترى كان 
حتى يتفقد الشامبو الذي كان تغسل به أمنا شعرها الصابون الذي تغتسل به البن والهيل والقهوة كل شيء يتفقده للوالدة والوالدة كانت تدعو له كثيرا هنا قال الشيخ بسبب هذا بسبب هذا مات أخوكم ميتة ميتة حسنة أيها الشباب أسمعتم أسمعتم واعلموا أن من مات مثل هذه الميتة سيدخل الجنة وبغير حساب إن شاء الله تعالى لأن الجميع كيف سيقف يوم القيامة كيف سيحشر الإنسان يوم القيامة سيحشر على ما مات عليه هذا مات أثناء صلاة الجمعة هل ترون أن الله جل وعلا سيطرحه في النار وهو قائم يصلي بين يديه في أفضل يوم من أيام الأسبوع The response from Khalid to the Sheikh was Sheikh, all I can tell you is that we're a group of brothers and we have some sisters and our mother is alive. Muhammad, the one who died, honestly, he was the most dutiful of all of us towards our mother. I mean, he didn't leave her alone. He visited her all the time. Not only that, but he would look into all her needs. And as he spoke, he said, everything big or small that you can imagine, Muhammad was concerned about for our mother. The shampoo she used to wash her hair with, the soap that she used when she took a bath, whether it be the coffee or any of the groceries in the home, Muhammad was there for her, always looking after his mother. And here the sheikh stopped and he said to Khalid, the brother, he said, ah, this, insha'Allah ta'ala, this is the reason that he met such a good end. This is the reason that he met such a good end. That answers, that answers my question. قَالَ اللَّهُ تَعَالَى وَبِالْوَالِدَيْنِ إِحْسَانًا وَبِالْوَالِدَيْنِ إِحْسَانًا إِمَّا يَبْلُغَنَّ عِنْدَكَ الْكِبَرَ أَحَدُهُمَا أَوْ كِلَاهُمَا فلا تقل لهما أف ولا تنهرهما وقل لهما قولا كريما. And here we need to think long and hard. Remember that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ordered and commanded us to be kind towards our parents, to treat them well. If either one or both of them are alive, when they are around us, we are not to say even the slightest words that show disrespect towards them. And we are not to yell at them, we are not to shout at them, but we're always to speak to them in the most honorable manner. Think about it long and hard. This young man died in that state and it was because of something that he used to do throughout his life. He used to look after his mother. And as a result of that, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave him that good end. A good end. An end because of which, insha'Allah, he will enter Jannah without reckoning. What do you think? The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam told us that we will be raised up on the day of Qiyamah, on the day of judgment, the way that we left this world. Imagine that this young man, he will be raised up on the day of judgment while he is praying Salatul Jumu'ah. Do you think? that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will look at this young man praying Salatul Jumu'ah on the best day of the week in a masjid in one of the houses of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala do you think that Allah would toss this young man into the hellfire? وَالْقِسَّةُ ثَانِيَ عَنْ إِمْرَأَةِ إِمْرَأَةِ تَوَضَّأَتْ وَخَرَجَتْ مِنْ بَيْتِهَا خَرَجَتْ مِنْ بَيْتِهَا وَلَكِنْ إِلَى أَيْنَ تَذْهَبْ كانت متوجهة إلى المسجد دخلت المسجد واصطفت مع النساء وصلت العشاء خلف الإمام 
وبعد ذلك استفت مع النساء وشرع الإمام بصلاة التراويح وبعد أن فرغوا من صلاة التراويح دخل في صلاة الوتر وفي آخر الوتر قام الإمام رافعا يديه ومن خلفه يرفعون أيديهم والإمام يدعو ويسأل الله سبحانه وتعالى ويترجى وبكى الإمام وأبكى الناس والنسوان التي حول هذه المرأة يبكين الجميع يبكي وأثناء هذا البكاء تسقط هذه المرأة هذه المرأة تسقط وهي رافعة يديها في ليلة من ليالي شهر رمضان تؤمن على دعاء الإمام تسقط هذه المرأة وبعد أن سلم الإمام التفت النساء حولها ووجدوا أنها قد فاضت روحها اسمعوا واسمعوا جيدا يقول الله سبحانه وتعالى عن الذي يبحث عن الآخرة يقول جل من قائل ومن أراد الآخرة وسعى لها سعيها وهنا وسعى لها سعيها يعني لا يكفي أني أترجى ولا يكفي أني أتمنى حسن الخاتمة لا يكفي أني أتمنى دخول الجنة لا بد أن أسعى لا بد أن أعمل وأنا على قيد الحياة في هذه الدنيا من أراد الآخرة وسعى لها سعيها وهو مؤمن فأولئك كان سعيهم مشكورا The second story is about a woman who had taken wudu and left her home. Left her home for what purpose? She was going to the masjid. She entered the masjid and she lined up with the women in the women's prayer hall and the imam led them in Salat al-Isha. After that they lined up again and he led them in Salat al-Taraweeh. And after Salat al-Taraweeh he led them in Salat al-Witr. And at the end of Salat al-Witr he stood with his hands raised, making dua, supplicating to Allah Jalla wa'ala, asking of Allah Jalla wa'ala. And as he did so, he cried, and he made the people in the masjid cry. And the women around this sister we are speaking of were of course crying as she was crying, and she was saying, Ameen, after the dua of the Imam. And as this was carrying on, she fell to the ground. Immediately after the salah, women surrounded her, of course, to see what had happened. And they found that her soul had left her body. Once again, look at the good end. But listen also to the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, where he tells us that it is not sufficient for us to only hope for a good end. It is not sufficient that we wish to enter paradise, but rather we have to work for it as long as we are alive on the face of this earth. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَمَنْ أَرَادَ الْآخِرَةَ وَسَعَى لَهَا سَعْيَهَا وَهُوَ مُؤْمِنْ فَأُولَٰئِكَ كَانَ سَعْيُهُمْ مَشْكُورًا Which means, whoever desires the hereafter, whoever wants paradise in the hereafter, and exerts the effort due to it, and exerts the effort due to it. In other words, we have to work for it. It is not enough for us to say, I want a good end, oh Allah, give me a good end. I have to do something for it. In the first story, we heard about that young man who Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala granted a good end because of something he was accustomed to doing, which was looking after his mother. Here, we hear of a young woman, of a young lady, who was given a good end because what was important to her is to be in the masjid and to pray Salat al-Taraweeh and she was making dua to Allah Jalla wa'ala and he took her away, he took her away in that, in that state. So whoever desires the hereafter and exerts the effort, due, uh, the effort due to it while they are a believer, it is those whose effort is ever appreciated. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala appreciates our efforts by granting us a good end. وأما القصة, القصة الأخيرة 
فهي لرجل كبير في السن رجل أمي لا يقرأ ولا يكتب ولكن قلبه معلق بربه سبحانه وتعالى وهذا الرجل كان يعيش في مدينة الرسول صلى الله عليه وسلم وله عادة عجيبة هذا الرجل كل يوم يدخل المسجد النبوي ثم يصلي ركعتي تحية المسجد وبعد ذلك يعمد إلى دولاب المصاحف يا رجل أنت أمي لا تقرأ ولا تكتب شو بدك في في المصاحف الرجل يعمد إلى دولاب المصاحف ويأخذ مصحفا ثم يبحث في المسجد عن شاب جالس هكذا فإذا وجد شابا من هؤلاء الشباب يذهب إليه ويجلس بين يديه ويقول له يا ولدي اقرأ علي القرآن فإني أحب أن أسمع كلام الله سبحانه وتعالى وليس هذا بغريب أيها الأخيار فإن النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم قال لابن مسعود رضي الله عنه وأرضاه يا يا ابن مسعود اقرأ علي القرآن فيقول له ابن مسعود رضي الله تعالى عنه وأرضاه أقرأ عليك وعليك منزل فقال النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم إنني أحب أن أسمعه من غيري المهم دخل هذا الشايب المسجد وصلى ركعتي تحية المسجد ويعمد إلى دولاب المصاحف ويأخذ مصحفا ويجد شابا جالسا هكذا ويجلس بين يديه ويقول له يا بني اقرأ علي من كلام الله فإني أحب أن أسمع القرآن فأخذ الشاب المصحف وبدأ يقرأ وهو يقرأ والشايب يتدبر أفلا يتدبرون القرآن أم على قلوب أقفالها الشاب يقرأ والشايب يتدبر حتى وصلوا موضع سجود فأقفل الشاب المصحف وجعله جانبا وسجد سجدة التلاوة الشاب سجد والشايب سجد أكمل الشاب السجدة فجلس ومسك المصحف ينتظر الشايب ولكن الشايب أطال السجود فقال الشاب لعله خشع في سجوده ولكن بعد فترة ذهب الشاب ليرى ماذا حدث لهذا الرجل الكبير في السن فوجد أنه قد فاضت قد فاضت روحه يقول له يا عم يا عم وما يجي فوجد أنه أنه قد مات مات على شيء اعتاده من طاعة الله سبحانه وتعالى واسمعوا هذا الحديث هذا الحديث الذي يقول فيه النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم إذا أراد الله بعبد خيرا عسله عسله سأل الصحابة قالوا ما عسله يعني كيف عسله قال النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم يوفقه لعمل الخير ثم يقبضه عليه وكما قلنا سابقا يحشر العبد على ما مات عليه أسأل الله سبحانه وتعالى لي ولكم حسن الختام The last story is about an old man who happened to live in Al-Madinah An old man who couldn't read or write An unlettered man But subhanallah he had a heart which was attached to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala And he had a strange habit for a man who was illiterate couldn't read or write. He would go to the masjid of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and pray the two raka'a known as tahiyyat al-masjid, you know, to honor the masjid. And after that, he would go to the shelf of Qur'ans. He doesn't read or write. What does he want with the Qur'an? 
he would go and take the Quran and look around the masjid to see if there was anybody sitting there, if there was any young man just sitting there doing nothing. Then he would go and sit in front of him and give him the Quran and say, my son, read to me from the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because I love to hear the Quran. And this is not something strange by the way. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam one day said to Abdullah ibn Mas'ud radiallahu anhu arda, read for me. In other words, from the Quran. Ibn Mas'ud radiallahu anhu says to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, you want me to read to you and the Quran was sent down to you. And in response, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, indeed, I love to hear it from other than myself. So it's not a strange thing. So that one day, this old man comes to the masjid, prays the hiyat al-masjid, and finds a young man and says to him, read to me. And the young man begins to recite. And as he's reciting, the old man, of course, is being affected by what he hears. Because these are the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He is reflecting upon the words of Allah jalla wa ala. This is what is required of us. أَفَلَا يَتَدَبَّرُونَ الْقُرْآنَ أَمْ عَلَىٰ قُلُوبِ الْأَقْفَالُهَا Allah Jalla wa ala says, do they not reflect? Do they not reflect upon the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Or are there locks upon their hearts? In any event, he continued to recite until he came to a place where we have to do prostration, where we have to do sajda. So he closed the Qur'an and put it aside and went into sujood, went into prostration. And the old man also prostrated. The young man got up from his prostration and found that the old man was still in prostration, still in sujood. But he waited for him, he took the Qur'an and he waited for him. And he said, you know, maybe he got really emotional, he's so humble before Allah Jalla wa ala. I'll give him time. But enough time had passed for him to be concerned. So he went and he called out to him, uncle, uncle, what's wrong? Only to find that the man had died while in sujood. And here I want to relate the hadith to you. In this hadith, the Prophet says, when Allah wants good for a person, then عَسَّلَهُ I mean, I don't even know how to translate that. He sweetens him. Sweetens him. عَسَّلَهُ The Sahaba asked, how does he sweeten him? مَا عَسَّلَهُ كَيْفَ عَسَّلَهُ And the Prophet says, Allah directs that person towards a good deed and then takes his soul or her soul while they are doing that good deed. So in conclusion, what we want to learn from all of this, from the ayat of the Qur'an that we heard, from these stories that we heard and looking at the ahadith of the Prophet ﷺ, what we really want to take from all of this is that you and I, our lives will come to an end sooner than we think. And what is really important is for us to go in the best possible manner. And in order for that to happen, it is not sufficient that you and I hope for a good end. And that we pray to Allah to grant us a good end, that alone is not sufficient. We do that, yes, but at the same time, we strive and we make an effort. We do things, wallahi, it could be anything. It could be you looking after one of your parents. It could be that poor person that you alone feed and nobody else cares about. It could be those two rak'ah that you pray every night that nobody knows about just before you go to sleep. It could be because of that one page of Qur'an that you read every day, come what may. It could be any one of those good deeds. So make sure that you and I have a habit of doing good deeds and our intention also is that because of this, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will grant us a good end. أقول قولي هذا وأستغفر الله لي ولكم ولسائر المسلمين فاستغفروه إنه هو الغفور الرحيم. الحمد لله رب العالمين والعاقبة للمتقين ولا عدوان إلا على الظالمين وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وصحبه ومن تبعهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين أما بعد يا ابن آدم أحبب ما شئت فإنك مفارقه 
وعمل ما شئت فإنك ملاقيه وكن كما شئت فكما تدين تدان اللهم أعز الإسلام والمسلمين اللهم أعز الإسلام والمسلمين اللهم أعز الإسلام والمسلمين اللهم انصر من نصر الدين اللهم انصر من نصر الدين واخذل من خذل الدين اللهم انصر المجاهدين في سبيلك في كل مكان اللهم ثبت أقدامهم واربط على قلوبهم وأنزل السكينة عليهم وانصرهم على عدوهم وعدوك يا عزيز ويا قوي اللهم انصر المسلمين المستضعفين في كل مكان اللهم خذ بأيديهم وعجل بنصرهم يا عزيز يا قوي اللهم إنا نسألك الهدى والتقى والعفاف والغنى اللهم حبب إلينا الإيمان وزينه في قلوبنا وكره إلينا الكفر والفسوق والعسيان واجعلنا اللهم من الراشدين اللهم إنا نسألك حسن الخاتمة يا رب العالمين اللهم إنا نسألك حسن الخاتمة يا رب العالمين اللهم أحينا على لا إله إلا الله وأمتنا على لا إله إلا الله اللهم اجعل آخر كلامنا من الدنيا لا إله إلا الله اللهم تقبل منا إنك أنت السميع العليم وتب علينا إنك أنت التواب الرحيم وآخر دعوانا أن الحمد لله رب العالمين قوموا إلى صلاتكم رحمكم الله